I've been coding for a long time. I think the first time I wrote a line of code was in third grade and I just finished 12th grade. In that time, in that long time, I've learned how to learn things a little bit quicker. I've learned a lot of new programming languages, new programming libraries, and obviously I've had to learn a lot of new things for school in the nine years that have passed. I've improved my skills and now I feel comfortable learning a new programming language in just a few hours and learning new concepts that they teach in school pretty quickly. Just as a quick disclaimer, I want to add that obviously everybody learns things at different paces and some things that are easy for you to learn might be hard for others to learn and some things that are hard for you to learn might be easy for others to learn and there's no problem with that. This video is just for you to learn from and improve your own learning style. I'm going to be talking about three main things that really helped me learn. One is the Pareto principle then taking better notes, learning how to take good notes, and then the Feynman technique. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. My examples will mainly be centered around learning how to code, but they'll be applicable to basically everything else as well. Let's talk about the 80-20 rule, or the Pareto principle. Basically, the Pareto principle states that 80% of results are produced by only 20% of your efforts. And this is something you might have noticed before, that when you're learning something, a lot of the big portions are easier to learn and are quicker to learn than it is to focus in on the minute details. And this is an important thing to note. You have to know that at a point, putting in any more effort isn't really worth it because you're gonna to start to get diminishing returns. Now, I'm not saying slack off, but what I am saying is that you should only focus on the most important parts of a subject. If you're learning something new, then only focus on the main ideas at the beginning. And that's why I like to scope out a subject before I get into it. When I'm learning something new, I'll go through the subject just as a brief overview, like look at the syllabus basically, and be like, okay, so these are the main big points. And that's what I'll really focus on learning. And then if I have time and I'm doing a second do over and I'm looking at something again, I'll go back and check at it and look at the minute details. But you can learn a lot if you really just look at the main points of a section. Obviously the 80, 20 numbers aren't exact, but the same, but the underlying principle is definitely very true. When I'm learning a new programming language or library, I'll learn enough to be able to build a project off of it. And at that point I've learned the programming language or learned the library because I can build something with it. And then as I build more projects, I'll go back and I'll learn the minute details to gain a better mastery over the subject. But at that point I've already learned it. You should be doing the same thing. You should be scoping out a subject and looking at the main sections, especially if you're cramming for an exam the night before because you don't have time to go over everything. So just as a quick reminder, don't try to learn everything about a subject the first time you go over it. It's not gonna go over well unless you're just spending a lot of time on it. And that's probably not gonna be very efficient for you. What you should be doing is going over the main points, focusing on them, and then learning those very well, and then at a later point, coming back and learning the minute details that'll really improve your confidence in the subject to a level of mastery. Once you've recognized that the 80-20 rule holds true and the Pareto principle is true, then you need to learn how to take good notes. Now there's a lot of ways to take good notes and a bunch of YouTube videos explaining how you can do so. I'll link some of them in the description. So I'm really only going to cover the highlights of what my style looks like. First of all, it doesn't really matter if you take your notes on a laptop or a desktop or on pen and paper. I personally use laptops for basically everything except math and physics, in which case I take notes on pen and paper because I find it much easier for me to work through math problems and physics problems on pen and paper than it is to type them up in LaTeX or something else on the computer. It's also important to note that writing things down on pen and paper is known to improve retention and it's easy for you to remember things if you write them down physically instead of typing them up. I was talking about the biggest mistake that I see a lot of people make. Stop writing bulleted lists of notes that you're just taking from the textbook or a presentation or a YouTube video. Now this obviously applies if you're learning code, right? You're not going to be taking notes and copying out everything that you see in a tutorial and a document. You're going to be wanting to build your own projects because it's better to learn like that. But if you're learning something like math and physics, this also applies. You're not gonna be writing down word for word what's in the textbook or word for word what's in a presentation or word for word what's in a lecture. You're going to be solving problems and learning because that's the best way for you to learn. And for the other classes, you shouldn't even really be considering taking only bulleted lists of notes that you're copying from your textbook or lecture or YouTube video. What you should be doing is reading your textbook or going through the lecture or watching a YouTube video and then understanding what's being said and being able to summarize what they're saying in the lecture and write it down on your own. 
It's also important to note that you shouldn't be writing these summaries down again just as a bulleted list. What you should be doing is using something like the Cornell Notes method, which is essentially you write down the questions that you have related to the content or questions that are related to the content in the margins of your notebook paper, if you're writing on a notebook and pen and paper, and then write down your bullet points like you normally would on the actual section. And then when you're reviewing your notes, you cover up the actual points and then you look at your, the margins, at the questions in the margin, and then you answer the questions in the margin and see if you can do so. If you're using Notion or something similar, this makes it a lot easier because you can use something called toggle lists, which you should see over on the screen somewhere over here, that essentially allow you to write down the question and then toggle it and show what's under the section. And then you can see all your notes and bullet points. Always make sure that you're not copying something down word for word unless it's a really important definition and that you're making sure that you're being forced to actively recall what you're writing down. If you're not doing that, then you're not going to be able to have things stick in your head and that'll make for a very ineffective learning process. And of course, once you're done taking down bullet points and looking at the main things in a list, at the main things in a lecture or a textbook or a video, you need to be able to write a complete summarization of what you learned and put it down at the end of your notes, whether it's on pen and paper or just on a Notion document or a Google Doc. And once you have that, you're at a pretty good position and you're learning things and they're sticking in your head, which is very, very important. Talk about the third thing, which I think is the most important one, it's the Feynman technique or teaching what you've learned to other people. This for me is definitely the most important part of being able to learn something and show that I've, you know, I've really learned it and this is what really gets it to stick in my head. After you watched videos or read a lecture notes or read a textbook on the topic, then you need to make sure that you actually know it. And the best way to do so is to explain it to somebody else, like a friend or family member. This is known as the Feynman technique and it's named after the famous physicist, Richard Feynman. You don't have to actually teach a real human being, although this is what I like to do, you know, through some of my YouTube videos, um, through clubs at school and through tutoring, I like to do that and really cement my knowledge by teaching others. You can just talk it through it to yourself. You could explain it to yourself while looking into a mirror. You're gonna explain it to yourself just talking out loud and seeing if what you're saying makes sense. Or you can just pull aside a family member or a friend and then bother them until they listen to you or whatever you're saying. Now, obviously not everything can really be explained to a five-year-old, but you should try to make sure that you can actually do that. Work through the concept and understand it to a point where you're like, yeah, I know this. I could explain this to anybody and then try and do that. You know, you could do this by making your own YouTube channel and just making a bunch of videos about things that you learn every day. And you know, that's the best way to do so because then people will be watching it and you know, maybe they'll say, yeah, I learned something or maybe nobody will watch it, but you'll be able to watch it and be like, yeah, you know, this video was good. I gave a good explanation and maybe you'll meet some cool people. But that's really what you need to do. You need to get to the point where you've learned things and you're able to explain it to somebody else. When you're trying to explain something to somebody else, you're going to be working through it at a much deeper level in your head. And this will allow you to learn things a lot quicker, especially if you start trying to explain things to somebody else very soon after you start the topic. It'll accelerate your learning process and it's a very, very valuable. All I really have to say about learning things effectively, quickly, and efficiently. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or join my Discord server, link in the description, and ask them to me or talk to other members in the community who like learning things effectively. I like making videos about code, programming, productivity, math, and a bunch of other cool things on this channel. So if you're interested, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. I'll be making some videos about book recommendations soon. Definitely turn on notifications if you want that. Follow me on my socials if you're interested. Join my bi-weekly newsletter where I send out cool tips like in this video. And if you enjoy the video a lot, consider hitting the Patreon or just subscribing. It'd mean a lot. And I hope you have a great day.